My name is Stefan Forster. I'm a professional landscape photographer from Switzerland. It never was photography which brought me outside to the nature. It always was nature. And I always used photography as a reason to be outside all the time. I always say the most important tool of a landscape photographer is the alarm clock. 95% of what I'm doing is scouting and then coming again when the light is great. So I'm a light hunter, that's my job. Other photographers tell me that I'm a nervous squirrel because I'm always running, I'm always in a move. I'm definitely not the classical landscape photographer which is waiting for something. Well, it's getting a little bit of colors in the sky, I can see, but I'm not very satisfied with the point I'm standing right now. So let's move a little bit without falling down. Yeah, from here I've got a beautiful small reflection of the sky. Imagine this perspective with a beautiful burning red sky. But in landscape photography, it's quite common to go to a place 10 times, nine times it's, well, it's okay, and one time it's just phenomenal. And as a preparation for this one time where it's beautiful, it's always great to know exactly where to stand and where to have the biggest, yeah, opportunity to take a nice photograph. A few years ago, landscape photographers, their main job was to taking photographs for postcards. But today it's much more complex because everything has been photographed a thousand times. Your picture has to be something special, something rare has to be happening. So today the hunt for a perfect landscape photo means coming again and again and again to the exactly same place for a hundred times until you get this one shot, which you can be proud of. In landscape photography, the moments are unique. So that means even with perfect preparation, with scouting, when you're standing on a perfect location, on a perfect light, perfect moment, everything is nice, then you have to trust your camera. What I need is a camera which survives my style of photography and they don't care about snow, they don't care about the cold, they don't care about the heat. They're just always working. The settings in landscape photography is, is probably one of the easiest settings in photography because you've got the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed and all those have to collaborate with the histogram. To start with the histogram, as a landscape photographer it's, it's very important that there is no highlights in the frame. So you can see here on the right hand side, I try to not get a contact of the brightest points to the right end of the histogram because that's the white. So I usually use ISO 64 at the set 72 because that's the lowest native ISO. The next part is the aperture. So there is one perfect aperture of every lens. The perfect aperture is three full apertures higher than the lowest number. With the F4 lens, I have it here, it is F10. The Z7 II, for me personally, is like a small D850, which delivers me everything from the big cameras, but in a small house. And what's the most important thing for me is the lenses. The Z mount is the biggest mount of its class over all other mirrorless cameras, which means you have a huge possibility to build lenses which are extremely small and sharp to the very edge of the corner. In the Z7 II, we've got a 45 megapixel sensor. That's a lot of pixels. So you need a lens which is capable to get those 45 million pixels from the lens on the sensor. And that's why I'm using those 
S-line set mount lenses because they are made for high resolutions. They're made for corner sharpness which has never been seen. So depending on a location and on a certain shot, I choose which wide angle I'm taking with me, but usually I'm carrying three lenses with me. One wide angle, one standard and one tele lens. And when it's possible, two wide angle lenses. If I'm going on a very hard hike for several days, I take the 14 to 30 f.4 S-line lens with me, which is quite compact and small, and I can use the small filters. Then I've got the very small and handy 24 to 70 millimeter standard lens with me, the f4 version. Then I take the new 14 to 24 which is just the, the beast for everything. What amazed me the most about the new 14 to 24 2.8 was its extreme against the light. It has a beautiful nine bladed aperture which causes 18 rate Sunstar and it nearly has no problems with uh, reflections and with flares. So the Sunstar, which is like the king of the frame, is just beautiful. For me, the advantages of the mirrorless cameras is just amazing. I've got, for example, the EVF, the electronic viewfinder, which simulates exactly what brightness and what colors the final picture will have. I can also add the histogram in the viewfinder so I can see now all the details in the dark part, in the bright part, and so I never have to add any live view from the tripod or so. So since I'm using mirrorless, I'm never going back to the aperture or shutter speed mode, I shoot everything in manual because I see the final picture, the final colors, everything in the EVF before I even push the button. Another big, big advantage for me, in this camera I've got an extremely well working IBIS, a stabilization system which is being realized by the sensor which is moving and compensates all my movements. And with this IBIS, it is even possible to take handheld shots with a shutter speed of half a second. And now I've got two card slots, one for the CF Express and the other one for the SD card. And I've got the backup. So that makes me feeling much better, especially when I'm in a location which I don't reach that easy again. Today, there is a mass of photographers trying to copy existing pictures. So my biggest tip is try to find something new. A great landscape photographer is not taking that kind of photographs the public wants to see. A great landscape photographer lives the passion of photography. That means take what you want, take your style and create your style.